Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now recently I posted on social media asking you guys what are some of the most underrated game consoles of all time. Now 10,000 of you responded to that. So in this video we're gonna go through the top five and at the end of it, I'm going to add some of my own honorable mentions. Let's take a look. Coming in at number five, we have the Nintendo GameCube. The Nintendo GameCube was released in 2001 in North America and 2002 in PAL territories. And if you remember back to that time, it was kind of surprising because it launched for only $200, which seems crazy today, right? But the truth is I'm not surprised to see it on this list because like many of you, I kind of ignored the GameCube at launch. I certainly remember when it came out, but at the time I was playing a lot of games like Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and then a little bit later after that, San Andreas, as well as a lot of first person shooters. So most of those games I was playing them on were the original Xbox and also the PlayStation 2. So at the time I didn't really see a need to add a third gaming console to my setup. So I kind of just ignored the GameCube. Another factor that I think played into why a lot of people like myself kind of ignored the GameCube is that it didn't play DVD movies. And if you remember back to 2001, DVD movies was really coming into its own. I had many friends who bought a PlayStation 2 simply because it would play DVD movies and, oh yeah, by the way, it would also play games. And that was a big deal. Now, Nintendo did eventually work with Panasonic to release the Q, which is a special edition of the GameCube that plays DVD movies, but it was only released in Japan and today is highly collectible. However, as you know, time has moved on. And so today, nobody really buys a GameCube to play DVD movies anymore. Obviously, we all have many ways of doing that today. And so it's not as big of a deal now, which is really nice, actually. Now, I eventually did pick up a GameCube about a decade after launch, and I just got one cheap off of Craigslist. A guy was selling it with a stack full of games, and I was surprised how much I really loved it, actually. When I first powered it on, I was surprised how quickly the games loaded and how great they looked. It's a surprisingly powerful console. I also really like its controller. It is very comfortable in the hands. Now, it's not my favorite controller overall because it does have some kind of wonky button placement and the shape of the buttons is a little bit odd, especially compared to today. And also when you compare it to say the original Xbox and PlayStation 2, but it's not a deal killer actually. Like I said, I find it very comfortable. And you've got a lot of great first and third party games. Some of my favorites are the Metroid Prime games, of course, Star Wars Rogue Leader, Paper Mario, F-Zero GX, a bunch of the Legend of Zelda games. Uh, you've also got the Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. It just goes on and on and on. It's such a fun system to collect for. And what's been really cool is that in the last couple of years, you've seen some of these smaller companies release HDMI adapters for the original GameCube that allows you now to connect it to your HD television and it looks better than ever. Coming in at number four is the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn was released in North America in 1995. And I feel like looking back today, it's a little bit more obvious as to why this console struggled when it was originally launched and also why it would end up on a list like this of underrated consoles. This was a really weird time for Sega and its customers because while the Sega Genesis was definitely a hit, well, you can't really say that about the Sega CD as well as the Sega 32X. And then along comes the Saturn, but a lot of gamers were willing to just wait a little bit to see what Sony did with the upcoming PlayStation, which of course turned out to be this great console. But the Sega Saturn is a really good console and you might be surprised to learn that there are actually over a thousand games released for it, which is why most people consider it to be sort of underrated. Now. It's important to know that a lot of those games actually were released in Japan only, where I think the console did actually much better than it did in North America. So for that reason, you're definitely gonna wanna get the action replay cartridge, which allows you to play any region. And it can be a really fun console to play on and collect for. Again, especially if you dig into a lot of those Japanese only arcade games, there's a ton of them out there and often they're much cheaper 
than the ones that we got here in North America. Coming in at number three is the Nintendo Wii U. The Nintendo Wii U was released in 2012 on the heels of the phenomenon that was the original Wii. Now, one of the really weird things about this console is the name. I remember being at E3 down in LA and seeing it on the floor going, what is this? Is this a second generation Wii? Is this like the Wii 2.0 or something like that? Or was it meant to be something completely new? Well, it turns out it's a little bit of both because it had backwards compatibility both with the Wii games, but also the accessories and controllers, which again, you know, is great for gamers, but it definitely added to the confusion. And it had this gamepad, which is this wide tablet-like controller with physical buttons, but also this touchscreen, which is definitely a neat idea, but it really wasn't needed in most cases and most games that you would play with it. In many ways, it just felt like it was kind of a pain, especially when you consider that the battery that was included with it didn't last very long. So you could only play games for about three to five hours, which is not great. And it probably has one of the smallest collections of physical releases for any Nintendo console. So it got about 160 physical games total. Now there are a bunch more digital games, but again, I'm just counting the physical ones here. So what's good about that is that it actually makes it pretty easy to collect for if you're going for a complete collection. And I eventually got one, as you see here, and like so many of these underrated consoles, it has a surprising amount of really great games for it. Now, thankfully, most of these have been ported over to the Switch, which I do think is a good thing because, you know, great games should be played by as many people as possible. However, a lot of these games play just fine on the Wii U too. And again, I want to emphasize that the Wii U plays original Wii games. So while there's not that many Wii U releases, you can play thousands of Wii games on this. And the great thing is it outputs all of those to HDMI. So they look and play fantastic. The Wii U may have been a disappointment for Nintendo, but it had a lot of good ideas that you see got carried over to the Switch. Coming in at number two is the Sega Dreamcast. Oh man, talk about one of the biggest heartbreaks in all of gaming. The Sega Dreamcast did so much right. It was such a cool console and it was just cut off way too soon. Many of you will remember that it was famously released on 9 9 1999 in North America, but sadly it didn't even make it to the two year mark here in the States before being discontinued. And that was due to a number of reasons Sega was struggling at the time. And also a lot of gamers were waiting to see what the PlayStation 2 was gonna bring because you know, the PlayStation 1 was so popular and then you have Sony promising all of this amazing stuff coming. It just, it just sucks that the, the Dreamcast just got cut off way too quick. Now what's cool for game collectors like us is that despite its short run at retail, it did get a surprising amount of amazing games, both original and also arcade ports. You may be surprised to learn that it has a library of over 600 games and many of these still look and run great today. And I have to admit, it's one of my favorite retro consoles to collect, both the games and also the variations of the hardware as you see here. And in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with the Dreamcast hardware. That's the big tragedy of this console. And part of me thinks it would have been really interesting if Sega could have stayed in the race and kept the Dreamcast alive. It would have been really interesting to see it take on the PS2 and the original Xbox. The only caveat being is that it didn't support DVD playback. So it's hard to say exactly what the impact of that was, but as far as a pure gaming machine, the Dreamcast is excellent. Coming in at number one, as voted by you is the PlayStation Vita. Oh man, it absolutely warms my heart to see the PlayStation Vita rise to the top of this list because I love this handheld. I've loved it for years now. I've covered it on my YouTube channel and it absolutely is underrated. Now I was a fan of the PSP and enjoyed the heck out of that, but there were definitely some limitations to that handheld. The biggest one being that it didn't have dual analog thumbsticks. Well, Sony fixed that problem with the PlayStation Vita, but just took it a step even further. If you've never played a PlayStation Vita, basically it's almost like having PlayStation 3 graphics and performance in your hand. 
And initially, Sony was pretty strong with the support of the Vita, bringing a lot of AAA quality games to it, both new titles as well as old, to really help sell the power of it and what you could do. And then something happened where Sony lost interest in supporting the Vita fairly quickly, at least that's how it felt as a consumer, which was really weird because, again, that initial push of the first year or so, there was a lot of great games released for it. And so I don't know if it was maybe third parties just lost interest or Sony themselves, or maybe they weren't making money or they're too expensive to make. It's a real shame. But thankfully, indie developers really embraced the handheld in a way that frankly surprised a lot of us because as Sony was starting to pull away, indie developers were releasing brand new games for the Vita, it seemed like every week, and it was just so cool to see. Plus you had companies like Limited Run and East Asia Soft releasing physical versions of those indie games for months and years after release. Again, so cool. And kind of like the Dreamcast, I don't really find much at fault with the hardware. I think the Vita is the perfect size, the perfect weight, the screen, the battery life, the performance, the controls. Again, it's just a fantastic handheld. And when somebody claims that there aren't any games for the Vita, well, they're wrong. So that is the top five underrated consoles of all time as voted by you. But at the end here, I do wanna have some quick honorable mentions. The first one being the TurboGrafx-16, also called the PC Engine in Japan. And like so many of these, it's a very similar story where it was very popular in Japan, but for whatever reason in North America, a lot of people didn't buy this console. And that's a real shame too, because it's a great retro console that as you can see here, plays 2D sprite-based games really well. If you like shooters, the TurboGrafx-16 is the machine for you. There are so many great ones on it and they play extremely well. And then the next system is the Mighty Vectrex. When you're first introduced to the Vectrex, it's a very unusual looking system because it has that TV built into it. And it also, well, frankly, has a really odd controller as well. But the beauty of this system is that it's 100% vector-based graphics at a time when, you know, your Ataris and your Intellivisions, your ColecoVisions were really struggling to recreate the arcade experience at home. Well, the Vectrex has all that power and it just nails it. Now, I know the vector-based graphics look pretty weird and dated today, but trust me, the Vectrex is full of really fun games to play. All right, guys, well, that is some of the most underrated game consoles of all time. But of course, there are many, many more to choose from, and I'm sure you will let me know in the comments which ones you think should have been on this list and why. I want to thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.